So good morning. I, I, uh, I'm excited to, to open up God's Word. I'm, we're going to be kind of bouncing around this morning from verse to verse and passage to passage, but we're going to be talking about Abraham, one of the patriarchs, one of the founding fathers of our faith. And this morning, as we continue on this theme of being broken yet chosen, I'm going to be talking about from faith to faith, from faith to faith. Now, one of the things I debated before um, as I was uh, coming and studying and getting this message together was, would I have them uh, play a little bit of the song, Father Abraham? Now, um, the crazy thing is, right, is that I am now uh, in my mid-40s, and I still remember the words to that song, Father Abraham. And it was one of the first things that came to mind as I was given uh, this subject to preach on was Father Abraham, how he's one of the fathers of the faith. And his faith is something that we should try to emulate. Amen. He is Father Abraham. He is called out, and then he moves. That's one of the beautiful things about his faith. And that's one of the beautiful things about faith in general. Faith is, first it's a belief, right? But then there is movement that comes after that. Abraham is called out. If you can go in your Bibles to Genesis Chapter, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house into the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So here we see Abraham being called out from God, called out from God right, to move in faith. Sometimes we get numb to being called by God to move. It's something that I've kind of had a, been blessed to have a front row seat to uh, in my own life. Um, when I was 15 years old, my, my father, um, who was a pastor, he, he had, up until that point in my life, he had not worked in full-time vocational ministry. He had this call on his life. He had this desire to do that. And he served the Lord in many ways, served him in prison ministry. He had his own ministry where he had a halfway house for, for men coming out of prison and jail. But when I was 15, the opportunity arose for my father to go into the full-time ministry. And when you're a kid and you don't pay any bills and you don't have those responsibilities, it seems like a simple call, right? all right, Dad, this is what you want to do. They're telling you, come here and do it. It was at a, a, a local ministry. Many of you guys have heard of the Haven of Rest. They had a position they wanted to come, him to come in and, and, and serve there. And he went through the interview process. And I'll never forget, and these are his words, not mine. He, they got to the end of the interview process. There were several interviews and they offered him the position. And then they told him how much he was gonna get paid. And he said he began to cry. Not because he was happy they offered him the position, but because he saw what the salary was. It was half of what he was making at his current job. Half. Now as a kid, I remember not fully understanding what kind of sacrifice he was going to make in order to 
take that position, but he knew that God had this calling on his life. And so, with prayer and supplication, he went ahead and made that decision. And the Lord blessed it. The church we were attending at, at the time, they, they heard this, they heard about the reduction in salary, and they stepped in the gap and, and treated him as if he was a missionary and made that gap up. It was in faith that he took that step. And then if you know anything about my father's life, the Lord has just continued to open door after door after door. But it took that step of faith. Sometimes I'm even numb to what Pastor Mike did, right? As I was sitting down and thinking about this, it's like, man, he really is crazy. (laughs) He left NASA to serve the Lord in full-time ministry. He stepped out in faith. He stepped away from all those years of training and, and formal training to follow after what God had for him. And that's my question to you this morning. What has God called you to? No matter what season in life you're in, he's calling us to serve him, right, in various ways. And typically, at some point in our life, he's going to call us to step out on faith. He's going to call us to step out into something that's uncomfortable. We see Abram left his family. He left the land where he was comfortable. What is God calling you to? First Peter 2, 9 and 10 says this, and this is for the believer, right? For those of us who are walking in faith. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, now you have received mercy. So I just asked you that question. I just asked you, what has God called you to? What is he calling you to do? What is he calling you to step out in faith to do? Well, here's a simple answer that all of us are called to do. And that's to proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Every single one of us are called to do that. Every single one of us. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later as we progress through this sermon. I love that Abraham was rooted in faith. We must be rooted in our faith. Because sometimes you can step out, and if you're not rooted in your faith, you're in deep trouble. My wife and I were just talking about this this week. We were just talking about uh, various people that we know that have fallen away from the faith. And we pray for them. We pray that the Lord would bring them back. But as of now, it's shown that they were not rooted in the faith. We must make sure before we move that we are rooted. I know that sounds like an oxymoron. But before we move, we must make sure that we are rooted in the faith. Because if you move and you're not rooted in the faith, you're in big trouble. We've seen it many times, time and time again, those that have moved, there's been an excitement, but they're not rooted in the faith, and the storms of life come, and then they walk away from the faith because they were not rooted in it. Colossians 2, 6, and 7 reads like this, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. 
So here's the thing about Abraham, right? Because the, the, we're talking about being broken, yet chosen. And Abraham, we praise God for his faith and what a, what a faith he had, but he still had moments of brokenness, right? And if we're honest, we all have these moments of brokenness. And one of the big moments of brokenness we see in him is he re, sometimes he reacts out of fear. In Genesis chapter 20, I don't have time to read the whole passage. We see him traveling, and he comes across a king, and he lies to this king about who his wife is. He lies to this king out of who his wife is because he has fear in his heart. That's one of the things that we can struggle with, whether we are rooted in the faith or not. I know it's something that I struggle with from time to time. No matter how rooted in the faith I am, no matter how cool, calm, and collected I think I may be or come across as, fear is something that we all struggle with. We see in this story that Abraham first is dealing with the fear of man. He's afraid. He's afraid that these king, this king and this kingdom, that they will kill him. And if you're like me, sometimes I struggle with the fear of man. I was sharing earlier this week with some folks. I was just thinking about um, somebody uh, in my life and in my family's life who's walked away from the faith. And kind of like Abraham, I've kind of hid behind my wife. I'm just being frank with you guys, right? And I've let her take the lead on communicating with this individual. Not that my wife shouldn't communicate with this person, but I have a responsibility to communicate with them too. And and the Holy Spirit has made that clear to me. But I've been afraid. I don't want to be seen as weird by this person. I don't want to damage our relationship. How many of you guys know what that feels like? You have a coworker. You have a classmate. You have a family member who God is, the Holy Spirit's telling you to share the gospel with this person. But there's a fear of man, right? Right? That little bit of fear that, that's like, mm, I don't know, I, I want to share it, but what are they going to think about me after I share it? Are they still going to like me? Are they still going to think I'm cool? Are they still going to want to spend time with me? Let's not have a fear of man. Let's not have a fear of man when it comes to saying what's right and wrong. That's a big thing too, right? In the circles that we're in, somebody says something that's wrong and and, and we're afraid to speak up. And I'm not talking about speaking up in a mean or a nasty way, right? We're just afraid to say, you know what, that's wrong. Don't say that. My prayer for you this morning is that you begin to confront those fears in you, that you will confront those fears and that you will walk in faith day in and day out not being ruled by a fear of man Psalm 27 and 1 says this the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall I be afraid That verse should be true and real for each and every one of us. If you're a follower of Christ, whom shall you fear? Why be afraid? I love that verse. It's funny, I was listening to a worship song this morning where they sing that verse. And I just had to ask the Lord, why didn't you give me a voice 
that I could sing, because I, I wanted to sing it so bad this morning, but I didn't want to clear the room out. <laughs> Another fear that Abram deals with is the fear of circumstances. The fear of circumstances. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes we go through things, right? And we go through things, and those things put us in a, a spirit or in a place of fear. I've shared this. I don't think I've shared this when I've preached, but I know I've shared this with the staff before and with those who know me. But I got a question. How many of you guys are afraid to fly? Go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, I see a few people. We got a few pilots in here, and I was making sure that they didn't raise their, their hand. Amen. <laughs> There's a few pilots in here. I, I, I'm right there with you. I have a fear of flying. Now, it always didn't used to be that way. About 20 years ago, I, I, the Lord uh, provided the opportunity for my wife and I. We, were, um, we weren't married yet, but we were uh, dating, and we were married in less than a year from that, to go on a missions trip. And... We were going to South America, and about an hour, hour and a half into the flight, we were told to um, fasten our seatbelts. There's some turbulence coming up. Now, up until this point, God had blessed me with opportunities, really, to fly all over the world. Um, I was fearless, amen? I was fearless when it came to flying, to visiting places, to going places. I would go by myself places, and Anyways, um, that all changed <laughs> on this July day, right? Because we got thrown around really good. So good that had there not been a doctor on the flight, we would have had to land because there were some people who had been injured due to the circumstances on the flight. Now, we didn't know that we were going to go through that turbulence, and up until that point, I had no fear of flying, literally no fear at all. And it was to the point that when we got back, when we flew back into the United States, we flew back and there was a thunderstorm and there was lightning and I remember we landed and then we couldn't taxi into the gate and I told my wife, well, I'm calling her my wife, my girlfriend at the time, but I told my wife, I said, I'm not getting on the connecting flight home. I told her, I said, I'm not. And I was dead serious. I said, we're going to rent a car. We were in Florida. I said, we're going to rent a car and we're going to drive home. I was consumed by that fear in that moment. But this is where the Lord is so kind. She, I remember she called her mother and her mother's best friend, two prayer warriors. Who are the prayer warriors in your life? that when you're dealing with fear, that you can call. And I remember Miss Rivers praying me on that plane. She said, put Kali on the phone. And she prayed and she prayed. And would you believe it, I'm standing here in front of you <laughs> almost 20 years later, right? Who are the prayer warriors in your life that you can go to when you're consumed by fear. Even though you've walked in faith. Here's another verse from the Psalms. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though it, wa though it waters and, and foams, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. When we get on a flight, we are not guaranteed a smooth flight, right? Anybody that's flown a lot, you understand that, right? That, that goes, that's a part of flying. You're like, you're, you're not promised no turbulence. And life is very much like that, amen? We are not promised a smooth ride through life. Turbulence is a part of life. But when we put our trust in the Lord, when he is our refuge and our strength, 
we know that we can get through that turbulence, trusting in him. Not, I'm not saying we won't be knocked around. I'm not saying that we won't be hurt. But he will keep us in his mighty hand. And one of the other things that Abraham dealt with, Lord, even though he was a man of faith and walking in faith and moving in faith, at times was doubt. In Genesis 18, and I, I'm not going to read the passage, but I want you guys to read through it this week, we see him dealing with doubt, bartering with God, doubting that what God has said he's going to do is what he needs to do, and not fully trusting him. And one of the crazy things about that is this is a man who is literally talking to God, and God is talking back. Yet there still is doubt there, and it's, if you're like me, that's very much a part of my story and testimony. As I was preparing to preach this week, I was looking back, and, and I last preached in, in this space on September 26 of 2023. And I had a doctor's appointment that Wednesday, that following Wednesday, and I got a cancer diagnosis. And the Lord was gracious and kind, and in less than a week I was on the operating table, and by God's grace, the cancer was caught early and they got it out of me. Do you think I would deal with doubt or anxiety after that, should I? Probably not. But I do. Over the silliest things. It's a struggle. Even though God has been so good and kind to me and my family. We know that doubt oftentimes leads to anxiety. And Pastor Happy last week, he shared those stats. And I know that there's many folks here that are dealing with doubt, and then it moves into anxiety. And then it paralyzes you because you're anxious, right? I want you to know that I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to be anxious, sometimes about really silly things. We were talking this week in prayer partners, and it's like you could build confidence in the Lord in eight out of ten things or nine out of ten things, and that one thing that has you anxious can have you bound. But I thank God that as we mature in our faith, right, and as we walk in our faith and the Lord tests us, he, he gives us tests for our testimony, amen. He gives us these tests. We can look back and hold fast to his promises and battle fear, doubt, and anxiety. I love this verse. It's out of Philippians chapter 4. Verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's my prayer for each and every one of you. That the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. How many of you guys know somebody that that's so true of? I pray that you do, and if you don't, I pray that, that somebody like that comes into your life. I talk about... Um, 
you know, my father all the time. I can't help it because he's had such an impact on my life, my mother and my father. And I think about how this verse has, has been so real in the way that they've lived their life in front of myself and my siblings and their grandchildren. And I think back to times in my childhood where, of course, like I spoke of before, where I didn't know that looking back, man, there shouldn't have been peace in our, ho- in our home during that time period. No way. There, there, no way there should have been peace. But there was a peace that passes all understanding because of their relationship with Christ Jesus. If you're dealing with fear, doubt, and anxiety, whether you know the Lord or you don't know the Lord, let that become a life verse for you. And finally, one of the beautiful things about Abraham is that as we look at his journey, we started out in chapter 12, we saw him moving in faith. He was moving in faith, but we see at different points that faith had to mature, right? Even though he moved in faith, that faith had to mature, and it's true of all of us. As we go through the process of sanctification, our faith should be maturing. So we see him move from faith to faith. In Genesis chapter 22, it's the story of God telling Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, the son of the promise. And what we see is Abraham has such a strong and unbelievable faith that he's willing to do so, believing that the Lord who had promised him Isaac would raise Isaac from the dead if he obeyed him. Now, back in Genesis 18, we go from an Abraham who is haggling and bartering with God over Sodom and Gomorrah, doesn't trust him, is worried about Lot, to an Abraham who is willing to sacrifice his only son, having faith that the Lord will raise him from the dead. I love this verse from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 through 19. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise was in an act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. What is it in your life that God is calling you to sacrifice? Is it your fear of man, your doubt, your anxiety? What is it that you want to keep control of? I don't know what it is. I know that we all have those things in our lives. I know I do, even as I stand before you, as I grow in, in my, my faith and I, I feel I'm sanctified, right, or I'm going through that sanctification process. Maybe I'm a 7 out of 10 now. When I was a 5 out of 10 a couple of years ago, I want you guys to think about that. And finally this. Abraham was a friend of God. Are you a friend of God? Are you moving in faith? James says this, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Do you believe God? 
I know many of you do. But it's my belief that any time we get a, into a room this big with this many people that there's some folks in here who don't believe God. You're not a friend of God. Well, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. You have an opportunity today to believe God, to repent of your sins, to put your trust in, in Christ Jesus and his work on the cross. That's my prayer for us today, that we would move from faith to faith. I know that there's some of us, that's what we're, we're, we're closer to that second faith, right? We've already put our trust in the Lord. Some of us have lived a life of faith, and we're moving to that place of to faith, where we're willing to figuratively even sacrifice our own son, believing that Christ and that God would raise him from the dead. And then there's some of us here who have not even begun that faith journey. And that's my challenge to those of you guys that are in here this morning that have not done that. Today is the day of salvation. Come to Jesus now. from faith to faith. Friendship, doubt, and fear and becoming a friend of God.